Recognized, Uncle Walker, D, 0, 1, Emily of Arden, D, 1, 2, Joe Moniak, D, 0, 5, Darcy L. Ross, D, 0, 3, Evil Sands Carney, D, 0, 4, Magpie Games, D, 1, 7. Previously on Mask's actual play, story arc title, Relations. They're not acting terribly intelligently, quote unquote. It's not like they're animalistic, but they're also not right. doing it tactically or strategically. They're just coming forward and brawling, punching and, and fighting. And what is dangerous about that, though, is they're also clearly strong. Just a little bit of observation means you can see these guys are overpowering the Atlantean soldiers who've come out to fight them. These figures are, they match in their movements. Like, I'm assuming you would have seen videos of, this is how the proposed creature genomorph would move. Right. There are, there were proposals for an Atlantean-based genomorph. Connor remembers Black Canary's training. And what, what he wants to do right now, right? There's just so much tension in this tiny ship. What he wants to do is just like leap out into the water and just land in the middle of the scrum and just start smashing things. Because that helps clear his head but maybe he says if they're just going to keep coming then it doesn't matter how many like we put down maybe we should go to the source and plug this leak nice he says to the others wally do you mistrust the leader or the team no i'm good but robin <laughs> oh yes <laughs> all right robin says oh yes. oh yes so i can't not do that yet i mean i have and to. that's oh, why we to. will fail that's perfect <laughs> Because you're not a good leader, choice. The bad news is I get to tell you what happens. So you send out that water whip. You wrap it around him and you yank him up. And you go to punch him. And his hand just grabs your fist as it's coming in. And stops it cold. Ooh. Initiate episode three. And there's that moment where you're like... Wait, say what? And then... He sends his own fist hurtling into your face, knocking you back, spinning up through the water. Almost, he hits you so hard, it's like you're moving through air, like there's no resistance. Wow. This is really a strong hit, far stronger than you would have expected. And I'm going to have you go ahead and take a powerful blow for that, because that makes a fair amount of sense, as he punches you pretty hard. So this is the one time I'm trying to roll low. This is the one time you're trying to roll low, yes. But you're adding the number of conditions you have marked right now. Ooh, uh, then I have... That leaves it as a, at, a, at a five. Still pretty low. Excellent. Okay, so uh, that is exactly what you want on Take a Powerful Blow. On a miss, you stand strong. Mark potential as normal. So you still get a potential. You still move towards advancement. And say how you weather the blow. So what does it look like? Like, he punches you. This is way stronger than you would have expected. It It hurts. And it's surprising, but you take it and you just come right back. What does that look like? Ooh, good question. I think uh, Calder, like, shakes off his fist, uh, you know, kind of shakes the fist out and starts readying kind of a more elaborate magical attack that he's going to try next because he's, you know, he's down in Atlantis. He's remembering all his training as a, as a magical warrior as opposed to this surf surface level silly trading blows business. What was he even thinking? Nice. All right. I love it. Okay. So... As the, the black suited figure is is hurtling back towards you, like with his with its fist cocked for another punch, and you're assembling this magical attack, I'm gonna cut away from there to go to the ones coming below. You all absolutely would have picked up on that impact moment of the fist hitting and just the sheer strength behind it, like the shockwaves through the water. But I mean, Calder seems like he managed to right himself fairly well, so it like he's not drifting and unconscious now. So the four of you converge on the Zeta tube down below, uh, where it is gleaming brilliant yellow, in like one of the only sources of light down here. Um, and I want to know what you're doing. Megan, what are you doing down here? Well, we're approaching the Zeta tube. I'm going to shout to the rest of the team to stand back, and then I'm going to try to just rip the Zeta tube down like the way that I've ripped planes in half before. Yikes. Yeah, okay. This is it. McGann, did you did you link us up? Probably, right? I would assume that I did. I assumed that I would have probably reflex. Absolutely. So while we're heading down, I can like maybe like throw up some technical stuff like into your head. Like these are the best spots. 
or something. Is that okay? Tell me how to do this if I don't know. Yeah, because yeah. I'm sure I'm sure Dick has like a photographic picture of a Zeta tube in his head and how it works. And this should be what happens, but you know, try that. Perfect. So, is there some way of helping, or is that like a team thing, maybe? Or that I would be 100 percent fine with you spending a team on that to give McGann a plus one. Like that is a perfect use of the team pool. That's a great okay. way to explain away. Like, yeah, I'm I'm giving you the technical specs. I'm telling you. Robin tells me where the weak points are. Exactly. Tells me where to target. But we should wait till after she rolls before spending it because. Exactly. Okay. There's no point in spending it if it's not going to help. This is not the kind of game that says spend it and waste it. But McGann, mm-hmm. I want I want to ask you a quick question. Yeah. We can resolve this. This is super simple to resolve. It's just an unleash your powers. But you are a Nova, and the Nova has this special mechanic where, like, you charge up your powers. You're, you, you can do things with your powers nobody else can do. So I'm perfectly fine. Just you rip it down. But I want to call out, are you charging up for us first? Do you want to get that burn and maybe have that to spend on some of these effects? Or are you just going straight at it, not worried about charging yourself up? Not worried about, like, amping up your powers and getting yourself into that your eyes are terrifying and the water around you is swirling unconsciously. I'll say that I, that I am charging up just because I was so rattled by interacting with these minds earlier that I'm like, I feel like I need to be more powerful in this moment just mm. in case. Excellent. Okay, so let's, let's have you charge up. When you charge up your powers, you roll plus the conditions you currently have marked. I believe that's zero for you, right? Yes. Okay. okay. That's two. <laughs> That's a total of two. Oh, dear. Oh, my goodness. It's a miss. You get the mark potential, just like with every miss, which is, again, what you need to advance. So that's a good thing. And on your charge up move, what this means is you hold two burn, a burn being like a point that you spend on these special powers you have, and you mark three conditions. So speaking to what you just said, this is messing with you, right? Like, yes. you have to choose three conditions and tell us which three you mark. And then I'm going to ask you what it looks like. What do we see? Okay. So I'm going to say, again, would be feeling a little insecure, uh, a bit hopeless just because she needs to help everyone and she isn't able to. And in this moment and in this moment of trying to be more powerful, she's reminded of what happened last time. And she feels guilty that she's trying to do this again when she knows what happens when she loses control. Excellent. So that was guilty, insecure, and uh, what was the other one? Uh, Hopeless. Hopeless. Perfect. Okay. Wow. (laughs) So what do we actually see? What does it look like as McGann is charging up? Like, what is the shot on the show? Her eyes start glowing, as they do sometimes. Her eyes start glowing green. The water's swirling around her a bit. Her hair is just floating around her as she's floating there in her mermaid form, looking like she's ready to destroy anything that tries to hurt her friends. This is probably pretty freaky for everybody watching. Uh, (laughs) She revs up right in front of the Zeta tube and is this icon of telepathic telekinetic might. Galadriel darkness. Is her hair (laughs) still long then? I'm picturing her hair still long. I'm picturing her hair still long. Yeah. Perfect. That's important to me. That's critical of the moment. <laughs> Guys, I so think it's hilarious that you and Darcy, Emily and Darcy, are playing together because that was like the first thing they said on their interviews was like, at season two came and people's hair were cut and it was not okay with me and I don't know what was happening and this is not okay. The pixie and- cut hurt me emotionally. The pixie cut hurt me yes. emotionally. So. Oh, I feel you. I feel you on that. Yeah. Gosh. That's amazing. It was rough. <laughs> I almost didn't continue watching. Ugh. I love you guys so much. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, McGann, like I said, we can treat this as unleash your powers. But now that you do have charge, I believe you have this one flare called overcharge, which will let you just spend the two burn you just got. And immediately you just take a 10 plus, you just do it. Like, you don't have to Whoa. roll the dice. There's no risk. You just do it. But that's going to use up all the charge you just got. I think she would. I think she would, that she's so focused on trying to do this that even though she's a little uncertain and she's a little not sure about whether or not this is a good idea, she's still going for it. Perfect. Okay. So, I mean, with Dick in your mind telling you what parts of it to take apart, I mean, I could almost see that not mattering at this point since you're a terrifying telekinetic demigod and you're just going to rip it apart with force of might. But So what does this look like? Well, she floating there in the water just reaches up and like physically 
moves with it and just tears it down, like tears it across and down and just crushes it in the water. Yeah, and so this this opening, because Zeta Tube is like this energy opening portal, and it just contorts and twists and bends upon itself as McGann moves her arms, and with a sudden burst of light, there's like a, probably a little bit of an explosion that knocks everybody back a little bit in the water as the tube pops out of existence. Wow. Amazing. That was freaking. I, I could see like Dick, like as they're getting closer, Dick's like, McGann, try doing this, this, and this, and like just, just nothing. Like she's ignoring him. I almost wonder if she's like just a little bit pissed at Dick as well. Like not like a lot, but like enough to be like, yeah, I'm on Connor's side here a little bit. You know what I mean? And like not listening to him. I could see it. Maybe a little. Maybe, Maybe a just little. a little bit. <laughs> she she shouts for everyone to move before, as she's charging her power, she tells everybody to move back. Because she still cares about all of you, even when she is being a terrifying demigod. Oh, of course. All right, that's awesome. And so, like, everybody stepped back a little bit. The portal pops out of existence. And almost as soon as you do that, you notice a change. McGann, you especially, there was some low-level telepathic thing there and you picked up on it before when you tapped into these weirdos heads but it was always there like low level white noise almost on the telepathic plane it's gone now and you up there preparing your magical spell calder as this black suited figure is hurtling towards you there's a, a moment where suddenly it stops and wrenches over clutching at its head and Whoa. you can almost hear through the water a scream and then the next second it twists back and is hurtling at you even faster than before. I want to cut to Connor, right next to McGann. She just closed the Zeta tube, but that black suited figure is now hurtling at high speeds at Calder. What are you doing, Connor? And also, to be very clear with everybody, there's still a ton more of these guys, or like a whole bunch of these guys up further out of the crevasse towards the actual fight. Normally, Connor doesn't usually pay attention to like, you know, small things like explosions or whatever. <laughs> but when McGaniel's move, like he leaps backward to get out of the way, almost like it's becoming instinctual. Uh, and then, you know, the Zeta tube twists and explodes. So there's nothing else obvious right there, right? No other lingering anything or enemies right there that would be where the Zeta super tube obvious. Was, no. All right. In in that case, if like there's nothing else, he actually he's standing on like the ground, the seabed. He turns to look at Calder and then this newly re-energized like black figure and just launches himself right at it. Excellent. Okay. So so like this figure is hurtling towards Calder as Connor is hurtling behind it. So the two of them are kind of going to smash it in the middle. Sounds good. That's maneuver eleven. <laughs> of course. Yeah. I want to stick with that and see that for for a moment. Uh, I want to see that smashing together of stuff. So Calder, you would obviously see Connor hurtling up behind this figure. And basically what I'm looking for here is I could see either one of you take the lead on trying to directly engaging the threat. Because I'm imagining that sort of he's equidistant between the two of you. But if you tell me, Calder, that your magical spell thing was to like wrap him up in a web or something, mm -hmm. then that's not directly engaging a threat and that can set him up for Connor to punch him. So Calder, what were you trying to cast a spell to do? Yeah, I was hoping to restrict them and potentially interrogate them, but at least stop them from punching at me because I've decided they're too powerful for, you know, it's not worth directly engaging like that. Excellent. So like a web that's going to wrap around his body or something? Mm-hmm. Perfect. You know, right, with so tentacles what... and little suckers, it's great. Nice. Why don't you go for that? Because then if that happens, right, Connor's going to have a real easy time punching him. Is that unleash my powers? That is absolutely unleash your powers. Uh, let's see. That's plus freak. Yep. That's only a six. Okay. So can you help? Can I do a team thing? Yeah, absolutely. Ooh, what can yeah. you do that? Yeah. Maybe I catch up to the guy, but instead of punching him, I grab him and throw him into her Calder's spell. Oh, perfect. Yeah. That's good. That's great. That's great. So that spends one team out of the pool. There's four left. And that puts your six up to a seven. So then Calder, same choice. You have to tell me, do you want to mark a condition or I get to say how it's unstable or temporary? I think it's unstable or temporary. I just sort of whipped this magical spell up. It's not perfect. 
I mean, you were trained, and it's a strong spell, and like like you said, you don't use magic that often, so it's probably not as good as it could be. But you'd be fairly confident this could hold the majority of uh, people. Mm. In this case, it wraps around him, and almost immediately he's straining at the bonds, and you can see the magical, the blue magic around him, like, juddering and shrieking and phasing in and out of existence and popping and he's so strong he's tearing through it uh so it's only a matter of time before he gets out it's it's a certainty he will get out soon and it's only a matter of time that said at the moment he is bound and unable to move you hear him screaming again through the water you hear the sound of him like screaming in rage and i mean Connor, you're right behind him now because you came up, pushed him forward into the spell. Are you doing anything more, Connor? If he's wrapped up now, I'd like to punch him. He Absolutely. You are more than able to punch a wrapped up, unable to fight back person. So, I mean, is this just like a clock to the head kind of thing or like smashing him into the ground? What are you doing? Oh, yeah. I mean, I know this guy's tough, right? So if I can do like the double fisted, like hands above head and smash him all the way into the ground, I will absolutely do that. Excellent. Okay. Absolutely. You do that thing. That's perfect. So the point there, and just to say mechanically, like normally this would be directly engaged with threat. He's not a threat right now because he's currently being held up by bonds. So this isn't actually triggering a move. You just Mm. do the thing. We know what happens and you smash him into the ground. He hurtles through the water, smashes into the ocean floor. And I'm assuming like this is by Wally and Robin uh, as he suddenly fooms in and rock and bits of sand go up everywhere around him. Not so close that they might be in danger, but close enough so they notice that the job is getting done. (laughs) Absolutely. Absolutely. (laughs) And there is immediately following just him smashing into the ground, that scream gets just louder. And that's the moment when, as some of this stuff is settling around him, you see him rip his arms and the magical bonds just pop off. His armor is looking cracked and pieces of it have fallen off his body. And so beneath it, you see this slightly scaly, uh, but generally human-looking skin. Over the telepathic bond, just the rest of you here, Connor going, what is this guy? That's perfect. And he smashed into the ground right by Robin and Wally, and he just broke free. And again, without any seeming sense, you can see him fixating on the guy who hit him. So he's not yet flung himself, but you, he's positioning his legs. So he's going to leap out straight back up towards Connor. Uh, it's obvious he's about to go that way. So, Wally, what are you doing? Can we do something Whoa. together? Hey, Wally, is it okay if we do something together? Yep. Do a, uh, a maneuver 7, seven W, which is the maneuver 7 but underwater. And have you uh, like do like uh, the, the spinny arm vortex thing and like fire me at this guy? Yes. I was going to do the vortex thing because theoretically that would also heat the water. And I don't know if the heat would oh, nice. um, mess people up. That'd be cool. And the whole time I'm going to be singing Manta, Manta cool. Men, I want to punch some Manta Men. And then I throw you <laughs> towards him right now. <laughs> so you could, do the, you, could do, you could do the arm thing so that you're trying to like slow him down or stop him. Like you're trying to directly engage him. And I'm going to jump into the stream. And have you shoot me toward him. And as I'm going, I pull my Eskrima sticks out that electrify as I'm heading toward him. And what I want to do is hopefully while Mm -hmm. Wally's trying to stop him from getting too much momentum at Connor, I want to try and shove one of them in through that crack in his armor into his actual body and see if the electricity does something. Perfect. So first up, it sounds like Wally, you're doing the Mm -hmm. circles really fast and you're doing this specifically with hopes of just keeping him held where he is like the the current is pushing him in place is that is that how i'm understanding yeah and then especially since he's on the floor it would probably be kicking enough stuff up that he'd be distracted excellent okay so unleash your powers there because let's let's see how this goes so it it's the 2d6 plus freak yes absolutely which is 2d6 plus nothing (gasps) oh i lied it got even better i rolled two sixes bam this Goes I'm gonna, perfectly. I'm gonna die. This is going too high. The, the low end of this is not gonna be good. <laughs> Wally's power is heart. 
(laughs) (laughs) This is perfect. Yeah. I mean, it's exactly your arms are going like crazy. The whirlwind of water current is spiraling after them, kicking up all that dust, just like you said, creating a cloud around him so he can't see anything while it's keeping him held in place. (sighs) Uh, If Barry could be here, he would be so proud. Oh. (laughs) And do it better. And do it better. (laughs) No, it's, but it's, it's perfect. Yeah. And Robin, you just hop into that current and go hurtling? Yeah, I do. And, and actually, Kid Flash also just did what I would normally do with a smoke bomb. So he just throws me into the giant detritus cloud. But instead, I'm going to have one of the Eskrima sticks out. And in my other hand, I'm going to have one of my bombs. So when I hit him, I want to try to get the electric electrical uh, Eskrima stick in through the armor. But of course, he's going to knock me away. But when he knocks me away, I will have attached a bomb to him because that's what Robin does. So, Of course. No, that's perfect. <laughs> yeah. So this is directly engaging a threat. He's still a threat, I think. Like, Wally's effect is distracting him and absolutely more than ample justification to spend a team if you want. But most importantly, it's keeping him from attacking Connor. It's keeping him here on the ground and uh, unable to go anywhere else giving you this opportunity. So, Robin, you're still going to be directly engaging a threat because, he's, as you said, he might still manage to knock you away or catch you or something. This guy's strong. Roll plus danger. It's plus danger? Okay, my yes, it my is. danger is actually a minus one, which seems weird. And But I did roll a nine. So minus one is an eight. Okay. Wally could give me a plus one, but that would still only bring it to a nine. And ten, no, ten's it's, the break. It's, it's the same as nine. What's that? Yeah, exactly, but the breaking point's 10, right? So we'd have to get two in there. Okay, that's fine. But that's still possible, because McGann is still down there and could help out, and Wally mm-hmm. absolutely is helping out. So if both McGann and Wally spend a team, they don't have to, but if they did, they could make that a 10. So, I mean, I'm going to I'm gonna ask that, because Wally, you have easy justification if you want to spend a team. Like, that's instantaneous. You're shooting him out of a high-speed water arm jerk current jets. McGann, are you helping? I know I should, but I don't know how I would. That's the thing. I'm over here in the corner still reeling cool. from blowing up a thing with my mind. That That's totally cool. Yeah. D- don't worry about it. That's fine. That's fine. We can save up the team. Yeah, absolutely. Like, if, if nothing occurs, if it doesn't make sense, that's perfectly fine. Okay. All right. Excellent. So, you are going to um, directly engage a threat. You're going to trade blows with this guy. Okay. And you pick one from the list. So you can resist or avoid their blows, take something from them, create an opportunity for your allies, or impress, surprise, or frighten the opposition. One of those four. What would you like to pick? What was the first one? Resist or avoid their blows. So basically, that's the one you pick if you want to say, I hit him and he doesn't hit me. Uh, That's a very Robin one. I'm just going to stick with that one, I think. Excellent. Okay. So then, I mean, it works out exactly as you described it, right? But even more so. So he, he takes the swipes. He doesn't actually manage to land any hits on you. You just come in, get him with lightning right into the armored hole, and then flip over him onto the other side with an explosive attached to the, his back, and then it just poof, and he gets knocked out of that little current and falls to the ocean floor uh, off to the side. Okay. Right. His response to this is he sort of scrambles up, and he's he shouts in pain, and now it sounds far more like a feral kind of shout. And he's actually going to get out of here. He suddenly takes off from the ocean floor, swimming at high speeds up towards the mouth, which is now open because the ceiling's cracked in now. So he's moving towards the mouth that all of the other ones would have gone up. That's towards Poseidonis, but more importantly, it's away from you. He's clearly trying to get out of here. So... What are you doing? Are you going to try to catch him? Or are you going to let him go? At the moment, I'm sort of, I feel like anybody could do it. I'm actually, I have um, another move that's called Be Mindful of Your Surroundings. And it's, yeah, but yeah. it says, when you assess the situation before entering into a fight, you may ask one additional question, even on a miss. Is that, it's then appropriate now because we're engaged? Or how does that work? Usually, yeah, that that's, and I apologize that I didn't call that out in advance. That's the kind of thing where like, yeah, right before we get in, we don't want to go in half cocked. We don't want to go in without knowing what's up. So you get an advantage and an incentive to try to read the situation before getting into the complicated situation. Yeah, no worries. So I'll wait. Maybe when we engage some new people, I'll use that instead. Cool, cool. So is anybody going to chase after him or try to catch him or stop him? Because otherwise he's gone. I'll try to stop him. Excellent. Can I use my telekinesis to just kind of like hold him in the water there? Sure. That's not going to get tough. Yeah, you got it. 
Excellent. Okay, so this is... He is a, a strong swimmer. So this is going to be unleashing your powers to hold him in place. And the only thing I want to call out as different this time is it is still plus freak, but you have hopeless marked. And hopeless gives you a minus two to unleashing your powers. Ooh. So you're going to be rolling plus your freak, minus two. Okay, so four plus two, minus two, so four. Okay. <laughs> So right now, McGann is trying to hold him in place with her telekinesis, and that's a four. If you can come up with ways to help, you have enough team in the pool, you still have four team in the pool, you could boost that to a seven if three of you can come up with a way to help. However, again, if it's not coming to you, don't worry about it. Interesting things will happen, it'll be fine. So does anybody have an idea for help? Do three of you want to help, or do you just want to go with it? When I actually hit him with this stuff, did it? what did it do to him at all? Did it do anything to him? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, it, it Well, probably when it shocked him, right, he, he would have screamed and arched his back. Right. But it, it's like shocking a generally superhumanly tough person. It hurts, but it doesn't gotcha. stop them. The bomb broke more skin off of his back and cracked his helmet. It's still on, but it's largely broken. And again, it exposed more of this half-scaly, half-human kind of flesh with little fin bits. Little things that would have helped make him for instance, move faster or something. Little pieces of sort of Atlantean-looking physiology, but not... Okay. Well, I will... I'll use my grapple, actually. We've seen that that works pretty well underwater in some episodes. So I'll pull that out. I see McGann's kind of, like, recovered from what she was doing a little bit, kind of... Because you did, like, a really big, like, thing, right? That kind of maybe, you know, you you had to take a breath from, and then you turned around and kind of just offhandedly grabbed him. But I can see that you don't have him the way that you normally do. And so I'll help out and use my grapple to try and grab him. Mm-hmm. I don't know if anybody else can help. Excellent. Connor's still angry. McGann's trying to do something, so he definitely wants to help. So this is we're in like a cave or a crevasse or something, right? Yeah, you're in a crevasse that you collapsed in, so it's basically a cave. Okay, yeah, he just kicks off one of the walls and just rockets across to intercept and then hopefully grapple this guy. And try to, like, bring him back. Great. Yeah, and also, like, hold him in place so he can't, like, kick and swim away. Great, great. And uh, anybody else? You need one more person to help. Yeah, Calderon will try to help. I don't know if I have any good gadgets for, for that. but Yeah, you can do the, the water whip thing again. I think that's what I'm going to do. Yeah, maybe once you get your grapple Perfect. like grapple on him, maybe I'll like lash into him from the other side and try to hold him Perfect. strong for her. All right, great. So between telekinesis holding him in place, a grapple on one leg, a water whip on the other, yeah. and Connor leaping off a wall and knocking him back. <laughs> and a Kryptonian. <laughs> yes, you managed, yeah. you managed to stop him and bring him back to the ground. However, it's seven. So you, McGann, you got to choose. Do you want to mark a condition or do you want it to be unstable or temporary? You have a lot of conditions already, don't you? I do, I do. So I'll say it's unstable or temporary. Great. I'm already feeling pretty bad. Okay, so, I mean, at the moment, it is taking all four of your continued effort to hold him. As in, if you release this, if you stop trying, like, Connor, you're pinning him to the ground. I'm assuming, like, Dick and and Calder, you've had to move to the other two sides to keep your cords taut so that he's just held in place. It's taking all you've got to just hold him there. You let anything up, and he'll get free. So the only one of you able to move... Get his helmet off! (laughs) What you doing, Wally? Yep, that's exactly what I was going to do. Oh, you're going to get his helmet off? I was going to, yeah, so I was going to swim towards where he was going to land, and then, yeah, the first thing I was going to do was go ahead and take the helmet off, and, of course, I will say, cool, souvenir. (laughs) And then... I take the helmet off and see what there is to be seen. Excellent. All right. I don't think I'm too worried about this because your teammates have him pinned down. Like, you can pull his helmet off without undue difficulty, Mm -hmm. uh, especially right now. So you just zip up, take his helmet off. Cool. Souvenir. And it's a little bit of effort from his armor, but it's, again, still not a big deal. You just got to, like, crack it off a little bit. But his armor is already fairly messed up. And uh, when you pull off his helmet... I actually think you're like, cool, Suvit. And you stop mid-sentence when you see the face looking at you from beneath the helmet. Because it looks very familiar. Probably especially familiar to the person pinning him to the ground. It is the face of Connor staring back up at you. What? Weird and changed. The eyes look weird. Uh, Like the eyes are not the right color. They're weird 
black color throughout uh, all of the sclera, and the iris is this like blazing red. So the strange eyes and scales and like little gills on the sides of his neck, and like the nose is not as pronounced as it should be, you know, on Connor's actual face. But all of that aside, it's clearly Connor's face. Okay, immediately, Connor breaks off the front chest piece of the armor to see if there's a freaking backwards S on his chest. (laughs) (laughs) You rip off the front piece of his armor and no, you do not see a backwards S on (sighs) his chest. That's worse. You just see more of that, again, like part scaly, part human kind of flesh. Oh my gosh. I have something that is not really related. It just is funny in my head. Since we're all connected psychically, it's coming across Wally repeating, don't say the joke. Don't say the joke. Don't say the joke. <laughs> and I don't know if anyone will call me on that, but that is currently what's happening. <laughs> Wally. Just across the middle. Like. I think this is a, you said this was kind of, this is supposed to be like a temporary, like hold. We're having to do everything. Well, and, and at the moment, I'm willing to give it to you. You are in control of the situation enough, but the only one of you who's really able to maneuver right now is Wally because the rest of you are holding him down. If you right. let if you let go at all, if you do anything else, he can get free. What I was going to offer up is that Robin is actually shocked by this and actually loosens up. He's the least strong of every physically strong of everyone here, so I think he's sure. if he loses any focus, the guy's arm would like loosen up and then Connor would get punched in the face or whoever's standing right yeah. next to the guy. That's what I was going to offer up if that's okay with everybody. And Robin messes up. Is that cool? That's that's yep. perfect for yep. me. Yeah, I mean, you're shocked and he's his arm gets free and it absolutely comes up and socks Connor right on top of him, right? Yeah, and I think Connor Connor doesn't block in any way. He doesn't even see the fist coming. He's just he's just he's just shocked. Like wh- what? Oh, okay. So so Connor, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to inflict a condition on you. I'm just going to straight up inflict a condition on you. Okay. Which is, I mean, it sort of fits emotionally as well as the punch sending you spiraling backward. I would like you to mark... I mean, I'm, I'm interested in your opinion, but I feel like, I don't know, hopeless maybe or, or like guilty? I think maybe guilty because, I mean, he first thought it was match and he definitely, he still feels guilty about not being able to save match. Yeah. And like now, I don't know, maybe these aren't enemies. Maybe these are brothers. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. Mm. Perfect. Guilty. Guilty it is. All right, so he knocks Connor off him. Sorry, Brendan, I have maybe an odd question. Is there a mechanic for voluntarily giving a condition to yourself? (laughs) (laughs) Like, is there a mechanical benefit at all? I was just thinking, like, Robin's got a lot going through his head right now, so I was just wondering. Sometimes there's a benefit. Like, for instance, I believe Connor has some moves and powers where he actually is better if he if he's angry. Yes. So, <laughs> like, there there's, can be things that make you want conditions. I mean, McGann, for instance, when she rolls to charge up, she rolls plus her conditions. So the more emotionally messed up she is, the more powerful she can be. That seems appropriate. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I see what it is. So, so basically, Robin's going through a bunch of stuff in his head right now, but he's not. It's not so bad that it's giving him penalties. He's just processing. Exactly. Okay, that makes sense. Okay. He's still in control. He's still in control of himself. Conditions are when it gets out of hand, out of control. Mm. Perfect. All right. So, I mean, this guy's I'm gonna call him Aquamatch. Aquamatch is oh, so great. Good. Best. He has broken free between Robin and Superboy getting punched off of him. He's broken free. And again, he's not interested in staying. The look in his eyes as well, Connor, and Wally, you would have gotten a clear shot of this too. But like he's looking at Connor. It's a look of fear and panic and pain at that point. And he's he's going to jet as fast as he can out of here. I sort of feel like if it's cool with everybody, like you're all frazzled enough that he jets and we are left with the scene of you five, like, down here in this fake cave. Is that cool? Yeah. And then I will be compelled to not hold my joke in anymore. And Wally will, like, f- kind of, like, downtrodden say, it looks like we have bigger fish to fry. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> like, even knowing, because that is the perfect call to reaction. Like, I know I'm going to get in trouble. Oh, yeah. Like, I already know Blair. this one is not going to land. Oh. Yeah. That's amazing. I'm so angry that I love that joke so much. (laughs) (laughs) 
So I think there are two ways we can go with this, and I kind of just want to gauge your opinion. I could easily see us cutting just forward a little bit to a new scene in Atlantis, for instance, yeah. where you're actually dealing with this and talking about it. Or if you think you urgently want to talk about it right this second, it could be right here and right now. Maybe we're moving toward Atlantis. Like we know now that the bulk of these guys have gotten through and now we need to go help some people and we're like traveling there and talking maybe. Perfect. So is everybody getting back in the bio ship then? That's the fastest way to travel, right? Yeah, probably. Yeah, As a then group. I'd say yes. For you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> For some of us. So, Calder, are you not getting in the bio ship and you're swimming in front? Ooh, good question. <laughs> I think I'll get in the bio ship. Okay. But I, I remark that, you know, I, I don't know. I'm just guilt tripping them about of it. Of course. Right? <laughs> so everybody gets back on the bio ship and I, there, I'm, there's a quick exchange of Zatanna being like, what happened? You all seem to freak out once his mask came off. And I feel like nobody's answering. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, exactly. I think that's probably what happens. I think we all sit down. Maybe Connor like plops down in the seat or something. And Robin's going to walk by like towards Zatanna. He's going to put his hand on Connor's shoulder and just just kind of not even maybe look at him, but like really low under almost again under his breath say, I'm sorry. And then walk towards Zatanna. Does that trigger any kind of move like a like a that uh, I feel like that that's a comfort. Yeah, I feel like you're trying to yeah. comfort or support Connor in this very very not at all communicative and adolescent teen boy way. It's perfect. Okay, so how does that work? Does that check out for you that it's a comfort? It works or support? for me. That that was kind of the point, right? So comfort or support. Yeah. I roll plus mundane. That's perfect. So roll plus mundane. What is my mundane? How normal do I feel? Oh, I boosted that up earlier. Excellent. So I got an eight. I rolled a seven plus one's eight. Excellent. All right. So on an eight, the disadvantage of the eight is you don't, you, Robin, will not get an additional benefit okay. from this. But Superboy will get some benefit if he opens up to you with you, Robin, as the final arbiter of whether it's opening up. Okay. Uh, so Superboy, how do you react to Robin putting his hand on you and saying, I'm sorry? So Robin puts his hand on Connor's shoulder. He says, I'm sorry. And then I'm assuming he doesn't like let it linger, right? He like puts hand shoulder says the thing and then keeps moving. Yeah, I don't even think we make eye contact. Or does he or does he linger? No, I don't I don't know. Maybe just for like a heartbeat, like and I'm sorry, quietly okay. we don't look at each other and then I, you know, keep walking towards Zatanna. Yeah, so Connor is slumped down in in one of the bio ship chairs. Robin moves past and like Connor doesn't look up. He just keeps staring like at the floor and then maybe like 5 seconds later he just says very quietly, still looking at the ground. Thanks. Does that count as opening up, Robin? I no, no. I, I think it in, in the dynamic, the personal dynamic we have currently. I think this was an enormous leap, actually. Mm -hmm. So, like the number of words right. is not the point, you know. So I, McGann knows this is a lot. Yeah. So, so Connor, you get to uh, mark potential clear condition or shift labels because you did open up. I'm going to let go of some of the guilt I was feeling over the first, the very initial botched mission at LexCore. Perfect. So clear and guilty. Excellent. All right. Cool. So is that the trip then? Is is everybody very quiet during this trip besides like that exchange or did anybody have another? I'm going to, I was walking towards the Tana just to fill her in, just to say, just oh, yeah. to give her okay, a quick so like fill in and then that's everybody else is probably quiet, but we'll get her up to speed. After that exchange between Robin and Connor, McGann's just sitting next to Superboy and kind of reaches out with her mind and reaches out with her hand, just kind of puts her hand on his, doesn't say anything, doesn't ask if he's okay because she knows he's not okay. <laughs> She's just there for him. Yeah. She's just not trying to force him to talk, just being, just letting him know that she's there if he needs it. Then I was going to go to Calder and see, because I know that, I mean, obviously dealing with his home being attacked once again. Try and I don't know. Do I, it's a supporter comfort, right? Is the best yeah. move. Yeah. Is it, but what do you do? What do you do for Calder? So essentially, I'm going to try and engage in a conversation to see if Calder will like talk it through, like just the on like processing the emotional level of here we are again. I've showed back up, and it seems like every time I show up, <laughs> for some reason, it's under attack. Mm hmm. So I will attempt to do that. Excellent. Okay. 
2d6 plus mundane. Yes. You're not going to be pleased with me, Calder. Yes. Darcy's pleased. So Darcy will be very pleased because the flip side would be a two plus two. (laughs) So I have a four. Oh, goodness. All right. Uh, There is only one team Uh left in the pool, so there's no way that that can get up high enough. So that is a four. You can't possibly know what I'm going through, (laughs) Flash. (laughs) Oh, you've always had a family you've had a lineage that you've known your place you know I'm as much an outsider as you here now and let's just get this over with Dude. oh that's too perfect oh wow okay I actually I Real. feel bad for Wally sorry Wally he's Real. trying so hard <laughs> sorry Wally I know he is I'm gonna flip that onto Wally Wally you're gonna go ahead and mark insecure Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry, Wally. Yep. Mm. You did. You did good. I could have really used those conditions lifted. <laughs> no, <laughs> that was not brilliant. to be. Yeah, not the time. Well, and then it's going to play into you know, in the original issues that I had with Calder. You know, you can either I'll think it to myself. I don't know if I'll mutter it under my breath, but essentially, like I know I shouldn't have said that joke. Oh. Oh. Just like going back to like I did it again. Like here I was trying, thinking, then it just didn't work out. Oh, oh man! Oh, it feels. I'm just gonna go sit in my stuff. I'm not even gonna sit in a chair. <laughs> you go sit in your stuff. Oh man. Okay. Wait, Aww. just Wally. Do you still have the souvenir? Do you still have the helmet? Oh yeah, that's more important than the mission. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Dumb question. Sorry. All right. So, and just to call it out, I could have seen a version in which McGann towards Connor was a comforter support, but also you specifically said one of the things you were doing was you didn't look for a response. You weren't looking for a response. So to me, in some ways, that meant that's why that made sense not to trigger as a move. So for this, I I feel like we're just going to cut forward to the ship comes back towards Poseidonis. You see the battle, the remnants of it, like blast marks and broken rocks and craters where things have gone off. But those other dark figures which you presume to be connected to aquamatch they seem to be fleeing and you see them in the distance in myriad random directions they do not seem to be fleeing in any coordinated pattern and the atlanteans they see the bio ship come up they probably motion for it to come into the poseidonis uh trees and you would ultimately be led to a group of important Atlantean personages to discuss mm-hmm. what has just happened. You are taken through Atlantis as the bioship is brought into some like landing bay kind of area for some of their vehicles, brought through the corridors, which are still underwater. These are the main corridors, not made for guests, and brought in to not the throne room, but the equivalent of an Atlantean like situation room, right? Which still is cool in Atlantean and has like coral on the walls and shells and the shells open up and reveal holographic displays and you know all manner of the combination of art and magic that characterizes why this place is so magical and there in this situation room are a couple of prominent atlantean commanders i presume you know aquaman calder you would know them on site but like Mm -hmm. probably not the rest of you but in particular aquaman himself is here uh king Orin is here Queen Mira is here, Aquaman's wife, and I presume Garth and Tula would be here as well, um, mm-hmm. helping to talk and organize, and, and like, everybody's, you know, it's a very hectic room, you're coming in and it's still, they're still dealing with it, King Orin is giving orders like, make sure those wards are reinforced, go out and get a medic to the men of the seventh, and then when they see you all coming in, everybody sort of dies down with what they're saying and focuses on you. And Aquaman says, well, what do you have to report? Player question. We don't know where our our, uh, Aquamatch went, did we? He just sort of flew out of the crevasse. He ran away in one of the scattered directions. Okay, he did. He definitely didn't go into Atlantis proper. Correct. Okay. My king, there were Zeta tubes outside the perimeters. They let through these assailants and they have something to do with cloning technology, the likes of which we've seen elsewhere. Clones? Our city was under attack by clones? Is that all you have? Certainly just mere clones wouldn't be enough to defeat Atlantean soldiers. Clones and beyond, and clones of a very powerful personage. Who? 
gonna, gonna let Connor speak for himself if he if he wants to. That's all. I'm, yeah. yeah. <sighs> Everybody's sort of like, eh, we don't want to say. Robin's <laughs> literally <laughs> biting his lip right now. He wants to say something and he's not doing it. So Con- Connor s- steps forward. He speaks up. He does. He's not gonna let Aqualad just dangle out there. So he sort of steps up Thank next you. to him and he's like, they're they're well, they're kind of clones of me. He knows that's not technically correct, right. <laughs> but like it's enough. Everybody's very quiet for a moment, and then, pardon? Well, not technically me. And so he, he starts like hemming and hawing a bit because like this is uncomfortable. Um, I uh-huh. think they're clones of Superman, half sort of like me. So they're they're like me. I, I thought that we took care of Cadmus and its cloning facilities. So that cool. So did we. Well, this is incredibly disturbing. You're telling me. <laughs> Definitely actually, don't I'm... say the joke. Don't say the joke. Don't say the joke. <laughs> <laughs> we can hear you. I know. Actually, so at the end of season one, when Raish and the rest of the light grab a bunch of stuff, including Match, like Guardian was there and he was unconscious on the floor along with Dr. Spence and everybody else. And we know Guardian was alive because he showed up in season two. So we probably know that something was taken like from Cadmus mm-hmm. that Cadmus was broken into and some stuff was taken. Right. We probably know at least Absolutely. basics, but we don't know where they are or what, like how they're operating. Well, so this is a worthwhile question about what exactly is known because people would know stuff was taken to some extent, but I feel like also the league generally would have had the notion that Cadmus itself is no longer a threat necessarily, but that changes exponentially if they know that, for instance, Match specifically was taken. So this speaks to how public is the knowledge that Match both existed and was taken. Uh, and in particular, I'm interested in Connor being the one who knows out of anybody that Match exists. How public were you with that information? Yeah. This is, I guess, two years ago at this point, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. That like I actually grappled with Match. No, I, at the time, I told the team that he existed, but I wouldn't have told anyone on the league except for Superman. Okay, so it is not common knowledge that there is another clone of Superman that was taken. That is not common knowledge. Yeah, but we know. It certainly seems that way. <laughs> but the team knows, to be clear, just to check in. The team knows. Yes, the team knows. Cool, okay. So, Although, it's years ago at this point. Aquaman himself would not. So, that's interesting because that means uh, Superman didn't tell him. So that's interesting. That is interesting. Yeah, so uh, Aquaman says, well, you did well to bring us this information. We detected your bioship coming in from where these individuals seem to be arising. Did you deal with their means of attack? Robin will step up. They had a Zeta tube. Miss Martian destroyed it before any more could come through. This is incredibly alarming. They're not supposed to be able to do that. Our wards are strong enough. They should prevent that. So there's a the, the aquatic Zeta tube that the Atlantis uses is different in design. It's used on the ground and that kind of thing. It's just different for some reason, I'm assuming, because it's a water. There's something about the water. Did this does, does, did this design of Zeta Tube look like Atlantean? Like maybe it was stolen or taken or maybe it was a spare or something that Atlantis keeps? Or did it look like a surface one that was modified? Those are the questions Robin's asking himself now. I think it looked like a modified surface one. Oh, okay, all right. That yeah, answers yeah. And, and okay. to that, like knowing what you know, yeah, you, would, you would have been able to pinpoint it. It did not seem like a specifically Atlantean Zeta Tube. I will offer that information as well. So he says... If they can Zeta Tube in, then they could attack at any time. We don't fully understand why the assailants fled the battle at some point, but they could return, and if they can open up another tube, then more could come. Uh, My liege, what news do you have of the city? Is this coinciding with the timing of any other coordinated attacks or perhaps any developments? We know that the light and their allies have a keen interest in what gets developed here as of yet i can't figure out any rhyme or reason to it their attack showed no real strategy it didn't show any target they threatened the wards just by virtue of being angry bulls not by virtue of 
actually targeting anything. If mm-hmm. I had to guess, I would say that we just witnessed a weapons test. So you said that there were the clams and then the holograms. Um, so would the, I mean would, that would be yes. the equivalent of a an Atlantean computer, if you will. Yeah, totally. Okay. Yep. So the whole time everyone's talking, while <laughs> I feel like that's a common thread for me and Wally um, is yep. everyone's doing something and I'm Wally. Uh, and so I'm gonna go <laughs> have been over there and I'm gonna have been looking up the c gnome information as well as the information that we have on both connor and match and see if i can kind of piece the two together as if they were piecing the two together because my current running theory is that they've used the kryptonian dna and some level of the c gnome dna and that potentially is why we ended up with a non-intelligent weapon rather than anything else I see what Wally's doing, and I walk over and pull the scream stick out that I had jabbed that guy with and electrified him with, and there's probably some kind of burned DNA, you know, like on the end oh. of it, and I just, I look at Wally, and I, I it, will this help, and hand it to him. There's a half second where I thought you were going to hit me, but that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's been that kind of day for Wally, so yeah. So Wally, I, I functionally think this is you actually using your powers, mm-hmm. uh, by which I mean, like, we can treat when when Robin does crazy deductive stuff and mm-hmm. figures out stuff no one could do. That's actually him using his abilities, his powers. <laughs> that's that's what you're doing, right? Like you are using your crazy super science. Yeah, stuff. I was gonna say, clicking, and if I figure it out, I will undoubtedly shout science, despite a serious conversation happening behind me. <laughs> nice. And also nice. using a magic clam computer. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> All right, Wally, go ahead and roll to unleash your powers. This is plus freak. I have nothing, so I have an eight. Total of an eight? Okay, excellent. So same thing as always, and in this case, obviously, I'm going to have to cater to specifically what you're doing, but market condition or it's unstable or temporary. Your call. I'll market condition, and I'll go with guilty because I've been, essentially, I haven't been paying attention to what is a extremely serious conversation happening behind me, and I've just taken it on myself to try and figure something out that, while, yes, helpful, it, I should have been involved up until now. Yep, but the good news is that you do run all of this information against what you pull up from the computer. First of all, one thing that you would immediately pick up on, and it wouldn't hold you for long, but just, just to call it out, this is information pulled from Atlantean, server databases there is no connection at all to anything outside of atlantis all connections communications connections outside of atlantis to the rest of the world are down Mm. i'm speaking a little bit to why that distress call was so hazy when you came in in the first place that aside you run the dna on the end of the extremist stick through you compare it to the information you can pull up and you get essentially this dna profile of the creature put together it is purer a little bit than the C-Gnomes, where the C-Gnomes are, let's take a bunch of things and combine them and make it all as good as possible, like a medley, yay. This is a strange mix that you detect three strains in. Three. You detect Kryptonian, you detect Atlantean, and you detect a third strain, which is weird and shifting and hard to pin down, hard to pinpoint until you suddenly realize that that itself is exactly what's pinpointing it. It's a subtle, essentially used as, I'm, I'm, I'm doing stupid comic book science, so forgive me. Used as like science. a bonding agent. The way that in Jurassic Park they took frogs to make the dinosaurs work, mm. they took this DNA to make Atlantean and Kryptonian bond, and it's Martian. Mm. Conclude Mask's actual play, story arc title, relations, episode 3, episode 4, T-7 days. You've been listening to Whelmed, the Young Justice Files podcast. Our hosts are Rich Howard and Emily Booza. Our editor and producer is Neil Powell. Our theme was composed by Emily Mio. Our logo was created by Kevin Bates. Whelmed is a fan-made podcast and is not officially affiliated with DC Comics, DC Entertainment, Warner Brothers Animation, and any other owners of Young Justice or its related source material. As such, these companies have sole ownership of all symbols, 
images, names, logos, and proprietary material related to Young Justice. Original content of this podcast is ours under Creative Commons. Thanks for listening, and stay whelmed. Stay whelmed.